Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take a geometric approach to factor a quadratic trinomial like this which is x squared plus 3 times x plus 2. We know how to factorize this kind of an expression algebraically but here we are going to see how we can factorize this type of an expression geometrically right so let's get started now let's imagine that each term in this expression represents a piece of area so then what would be the area represented by x square well it will be the area of a square whose side length is x unit and i have such a square drawn on the left hand side the larger square whose each side is of x unit right and then let's assume that the second term which is 3 times x let's assume that it represents three small rectangles each rectangle has a length of x unit and breadth of one unit or width you know width or breadth whatever you call it that is one unit and length is x unit so what would be the area of each of those little rectangles well their area would be x times 1 which is x and i have three of them so that would become 3x amount of area and then the number 2 that we have which is the constant term in this expression let's assume that that also represents two small areas now each of those area could be one unit or rather one square unit so I have two little squares drawn where the side length of each of those little tiny little squares would be one unit so the area of each of those small little squares would be one times one that would be one square unit so now our entire expression which is x squared plus 3x plus 2 is is actually represented by all these areas combined together the x square and then the area of the three little rectangles and then the area of the two little squares again so let me make a quick note here so here I have noted the area of each of these geometric figures the area of the bigger square would be x square because the side length has been assumed to be x unit so its area would be x square square units each of the area would be in square unit of course and then if you think about what would be the area of the small rectangles well their area would be length times breadth so what is the length length would be x unit and breadth would be one unit so that would be x times one which is equal to x and again it is an area so you need to imagine this in square units and similarly what is the area of the tiny little squares there well their side length is one unit so their area would be one times one which is equal to one square unit again right so then if you think about it the sum of these areas would be x squared plus x plus x plus x there are three rectangles so that would be x squared plus 3 times x plus 1 plus 1 which is 2. So then that gives us our original expression which is x squared plus 3 times x plus 2 and now from here we want to rearrange these figures in such a way that we either get a square or a rectangle of some set right now our original expression as you can see that it is not a perfect square had it been a perfect square then from these little figures we would have been able to create another square a little larger square probably but because this is not a perfect square because our expression is not a perfect square we will not be able to draw another square using these areas instead we will be able to draw a rectangle whose area would ultimately be equal to our original expression so let's try to draw the rectangle first and then we will see how that looks and I am going to draw the rectangle on the right hand side let's suppose this is the original square which is the x square meaning the square with the side length of x unit and then let's position one of the tiny rectangles at the bottom here and now I am going to use a different color for the rectangles so suppose we have positioned one of the rectangles there and let's position the two other rectangles on the right hand side so now we have a shape like this so we have positioned the square and also we have positioned the three little rectangles and now we have to somehow position the two little squares so for them again I am going to go back to the green color so let's try to position the two little squares down below right here so here I position one of them and then I'm going to position the other one well the drawing may not be perfect but please assume that ultimately we are getting a rectangle right from the diagram you can clearly imagine that yes this is actually taking the shape of a rectangle now what is the length and breadth of this rectangle well let's try to figure that out this length we know this is x units the green side right here that is x unit and then this length would be just one unit the breadth of the rectangles the little rectangle the width of the re little rectangle would be one unit now what is the length of the little rectangles well they are again x units and then what is the side length of the little squares they are actually one unit right here and here again one unit 
right and because it is a symmetrical figure so it will be the same across all sides like this meaning if you go to the opposite side it will be again this will be x right here this would be x unit and this would be one unit right here and similarly on this side again here it will be x unit I am at the top now and then the breadth of each rectangle would be one unit. So now if you think about this new rectangle, what is the length of this new rectangle? Well, there is one side which is looking a little larger which should be this side right here. So let me highlight that in red. Let's say this is our length. So I am writing right here. So this side would be the length because it is looking like x plus 1 plus 1. So you can say that our length is actually equal to x plus 1 plus 1 which is equal to x plus 2. And then what is the breadth? Well the breadth would be the, the vertical side right which is x plus 1 looking like x plus 1. So let me use some other color. So here we can say okay the breadth is actually right here on this side we can say this is the breadth. This is looking like x plus 1. So as you can see, we have been able to figure out the length and breadth of this new rectangle, right? So what would be the area of the new rectangle? Well, it would be length times breadth. And what is the length? Length is x plus 2 units. So let me write that first times. What is the breadth? Well, breadth is actually x plus 1 unit. So this would be the area and if you find the product of it, if you remove the parenthesis, you will see that this will actually turn out to be, let's try that. So it would be x times x plus 1 and then plus 2 times x plus 1 and ultimately you will see that this will be x squared plus x plus 2 times x plus 2 which will be equal to x squared plus 3 times x plus 2 and that's exactly same as our original expression. So let me highlight this. So now you see the factored form of our original expression is actually the green highlighted box right here. This is the factored form. So if we have to factorize an expression like this, we can take this kind of a geometric approach and we can find out the factor form of our expression. So from here, can we say that this area, the area of the new rectangle is actually equal to the sum of these little little areas, which again ultimately represents our original expression. So we can say that this area is actually equal to our original expression which was x squared plus 3 times x plus 2 and if that is the expression then the factor form of that expression would be the green highlighted box here which has x plus 2 times x plus 1. I hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.